The Anderson Family. Mary Anderson speaking. Mary, this is Oliver. Get over to the nursery and buy two dozen rose bushes and plant them as soon as you can. Rose bushes? Are you all right, Oliver? Of course. I just have to have them in the ground by the time I get home. But the girls are here from the auxiliary. Well, send them home then. Anything. But get those rose bushes planted. Uh Uh-oh. Here we go again, folks. Let's visit the Anderson family. Well, this whole thing started when Oliver Anderson returned to work from lunch. Everything seemed quiet and peaceful, but unfortunately, things were in a chaotic condition underneath the serenity. Thompson, Torrance, and Tufts, good afternoon. Hello, Sadie. Oh, yes, Mr. Anderson. Come here a minute. Thompson, Torrance, and Tufts, who? Mr. Tufts? He's in Washington. Sorry. No, no, nothing important. He goes there every year. Oh, Mr. Anderson, I left a note on your desk in there. Mr. Thompson wants to see you as soon as you get in. See me? Nothing serious, I hope. And so do I. Thompson, Torts, and Tuff, who's your party? Uh, is it uh, something personal? I don't know exactly. All I know is he just had Mr. Mills in there. Wanted to know about some roses, but Mills didn't know a thing about them. Poor fellow. Roses? Poor fellow? I don't get it. Oh, Mrs. Thompson again. Been calling for the last week. He's been trying to find some special rose bush for his wife's birthday. It's her hobby. Oh, why doesn't he call someone who sells them? Mr. Anderson, believe me, he has. He's made ten calls already this morning. He's fit to be tied. Well, maybe I better go on in and see what it is he wants. Shall I plug your calls in his office? No, just hold them. I'll be right out. I'm afraid. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Thompson. You uh, wanted to see me? See you? Oh, yes. Yes, I do want to see you. <clears throat> uh, sit down. Uh, thanks. I hope everything is going well. Around the plant, yes, but mm. can you keep a secret? A secret? Well, I guess so. What is it? I am slowly going batty. Huh? No, no, it doesn't show in my face. It's something deeper than that. Mm. Have you ever had something keep you awake nights and have you pacing the floor days? I sure have, but he's grown up now. I don't think you understand. Here's the whole thing in a nutshell. But first, let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, you uh, like it here, don't you? Well, uh, you mean, do I like to work for you people? Well, well, that's it, exactly. Well, yes, I've enjoyed my association with you. And uh, you don't think it too presuming of me as your employer to uh, ask a special favor or two once in a while? Of course not. Good, I'm glad you feel that way. Hmm. I may as well tell you that I've already consulted three of our best men on the subject... All I've received so far is nothing, absolutely nothing. Anderson, if there's one man who can hit in the pinches, it's you. Well, I'm going to ask you to do something special for me. Well, I can try. Splendid. Now, you know my wife has a hobby of raising roses. Best collection in the state. Mm, Yes, I know. I've seen some of her roses. They're wonderful. You have. Mm. You know, I always say... You can depend on a man who grows flowers. <laughs> well, thanks. I've often admired those crimson can- condiments that you have in your coat lapel. Crimson, uh, c- uh, uh, The oh, condiments, oh, condiments. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, it's a graft. It's crossed between the red bar and the crimson tophilius. Anderson, you're a genius at huh? last. <laughs> Eureka! Well... Did you call me, sir? I did not. Close the door. And stop listening. Yes, sir. Hmm, well, now, if I can be of any help, I'll uh, be only too glad to do it, Mr. Thompson. I, uh, I, uh dabble a bit in roses myself. In fact, I'm quite an authority on them. <laughs> Anderson, uh, uh, 
Oliver, my friend. <laughs> well. <laughs> you have no idea what this means to me. Mm. As you know, my wife didn't win first place at the annual garden show. No. Yeah. Oh, she complained that her collection wasn't complete. Well. Uh. <laughs> now she determined that she'll include a yellow rose next year. It's, it's a very unusual plant, and it, it seems to be unfindable. I'd give $500 for a bush of that kind. 500 Hmm. Let's see, I, I have the name of the rose here somewhere. Let me see. Oh, uh, here's that light bill. Corsage for Jeanette. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, oh. <coughs> uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's called the Dawn of Yellow Bus. Oh, uh, well, yes. Uh, well, that's pretty rare, I guess. Uh, rare or not rare, I must find one. Oh, I know I don't have any in my collection. My, my. It's, it's wonderful to have a hobby like that. Oliver? I'd love to see your rose bushes. You would? You would? Well, I mean, uh, well, sure, any time. Any time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that gives me an idea. Uh, my wife is over in Paddington for a few hours, scouring the nurseries for this uh, dawn of yellow bus. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just accept your invitation for this afternoon. Huh? Uh, but tell Mrs. Anderson not to fuss. Oh, I can eat anything. Uh, you mean you're uh, coming to dinner? Oh, come now, I'm not fussy. Oh, no well. special plans for me. Great Scott Anderson. Oliver, uh, what I'm most interested in is your roses. Well, uh... What a find you are, Anderson. With your help, I know we can find that dawn of yellow bus. We can't fail. Uh, yeah, I was afraid of that. Uh, well, we'll see. Sadie, Sadie, get me Mrs. Anderson right away, will you? Yeah. Gee, Mr. Anderson, I'm sorry to hear it. You've been with us so long, too. I'll take it to my office. Don't worry about it, Mr. Anderson. My boyfriend can get you a job out to Consolidated Iron. I'm not fired. Hello, hello. Mary? Oliver? Well, what's wrong? Look, now, don't ask questions. Go out and buy a dozen or two of rose bushes and plant them. Are you all right, Oliver? Of course I am. Get a dozen rose bushes and plant them before we get there. We? Who's we? The boss. I got mixed up in a rose deal and... Uh, Look, I can't explain it now. Just get the bushes and plant them. Plant them where? Plant them anywhere. I don't care. Dig a hole and put them in and throw some dirt around them. I can't do that, Oliver. The girls are here from the auxiliary, and I can't walk out on them. I'll get you and you to run over to the nursery and get some. No, 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 not that. They'll sell the boy anything. He doesn't know what to ask for. You go. I simply can't. Oh, all right. Send Junior, but I can imagine the mess. I'll ask Mr. Meister next door to help Junior plant them. I'll pay him a dollar or two. Okay, I'll leave it up to you then. Oh, by the way, what are we going to have for dinner? Dinner? Why, nothing special, dear. Tuna on toast, I guess. Tuna on toast? Oh, no, no, not for the boss. The boss? You don't mean... That's exactly what I mean. The boss is coming out for dinner. You know I don't have the time now to get anything ready. He'll just have to eat what we have and like it. No more notice than that. It's not fair, Oliver. Well, I didn't know any sooner, Mary. He invited himself, practically. And look... I'll stop and buy a few rose bushes on my way home just in case Junior doesn't bring home the right thing. I don't understand anything about this, but I'll do it. Hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, look, and tell Junior to have him leave those little paddles on the bushes so I can tell the names of them. Anything else? Mm, well, that's all. I'll be home before the boss gets there and check on everything. Goodbye. <laughs> What are you doing? Homer's helping me plant the bushes. Oh, uh, uh, hi, Homer. Ho, oh, oh, ho, howdy, howdy, Oliver. Gee, Willikers, what's all this sudden garden business well, all about? I'll explain huh? it to you a little later, Homer. Yeah? How many you got planted, Mary? Well, we just started. I, I think this is the third one. Where are the other two? Well, uh, right around on the other side of the garage. The other side of the garage? What are you trying to do, hide them? They're not that bad, I hope. They're mm. just bushes. These two here have a rose on them. Well, they've had a hard season, too. Do all roses droop like that? Look, <laughs> as long as you're here, there's nothing to help keep you from helping us, is there? Oh. Here, take this shovel. Well, the bushes should be along this side of the garage, where you can see them when you walk into the backyard. Yeah, but I uh, know, but you, you can't spade it. It's, it's too ah, hard there. That's yeah. silly. Give me the spade. Is this bush all right, dear? Well, it's in the ground all right. Why does it have to lean over like that? Well, sir, you know, it's a funny thing about them things. They, they all lean a little bit like that. You start packing them down. Well, let's yeah. pour some water on them. Make them look like they've been here a long time. He'll be here in half an hour. Well, while you're working, Oliver, suppose you explain what good these bushes are going to do. Well, look, he thinks I knows about, know about roses, and he can find a special kind of a rose bush for his wife. Some... Well, why do you get into these things? I didn't get into He thinks I'm interested in roses, too, so I have to give that impression. This is a sick-looking bunch of rose bushes. Well, sir, they all look that way when you first put them in. 
And then they snap right up in a month or two, yeah. A month or... Look, these are going to have to snap into it in the next 30 minutes or I'm a goner. Well, sir, you know, uh, uh, Oliver, uh, way back in, in North Platte, that's in Nebraska where North I come from. Platte, North Platte, Well, sir, well, uh, I, I love to raise kumquats. Oh, I love my kumquats. Well, sir, those are the fastest growing things you've ever seen, kumquats. They, they, they grow right up and push the roof right off. Look, the... Homer, dry uh, up a minute. Here, well, hand me that shovel, will you? Yeah. You'll get round-shouldered leaning on it that way. Shovel? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, Come on. yeah. You know, it's too hard to dig along this side. Yeah, you said that once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> oh, me. Oh, well, Whoa. it's a little hard. I'll move over here a foot or so. Yeah. <coughs> now, do you believe it's too hard to dig through? Oh, it could be done, I guess, but... Well, I, I don't have time right now. Now, those two bushes over there by the clothes pole are Junior's. He worked like a Trojan planting them. He just wants everything you have, Oliver. Oh, 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 oh me. Yep, a uh, uh, chip, if ever did see one. Oh, oh, look like they've had a bad uh, night, too. Oh, Oliver, how can you say that? Junior worked hard on them. Oh, well, a rose is a rose, I guess, by any name. Yep, yeah, you know, Oliver, I, I could get me a garden plow and, and, and turn this plot over a bit, you know. Not now, no? Homer. We don't have time to do it. Just make a hole. Put oh, in the rose bush yeah. and we'll trust to luck that the light is bad out well, here. Well. While Homer does that, I'll go in and get some dinner oh, started. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've forgotten about dinner. What's it going to be, Mary? Well, just what I told you on the phone, dear. Cream tuna fish on toast. Oh, no, Mary, not that. Why didn't you get a couple of steaks or something? With what, may I ask? I left you plenty of money in this You morning. said get a dozen rose bushes, so I got a dozen rose bushes. A dollar fifty apiece. That's $18. Huh. Would have bought half a cow. You kidding? Gee, now we are stuck offering the boss tuna fish. Uh, hey, wait a minute. He's a fisherman himself. Maybe he likes tuna, huh? <laughs> Are they honking for you? I can't see. Hey, hey, it's the boss. All right, come on in. Just throw out the anchor there, mate. What a way to talk to the boss. Oh, he's okay. Run in, Mary. I'll go meet him and keep him in the house till Homer's finished out here. And get dinner going. Oh, well, well, Edison, you, you certainly have quite a place here. Oh, yeah, I'm doing a little here and a little there. <laughs> It'll look pretty good when I finish with it. Uh, come on in. I, I don't see your roses. Ro roses, yeah, that is, I, well, I put them in the back. Sun is too hot for them out front. Hmm, that's funny. It, it's the same sun, isn't it? Well, yeah, I suppose it is, but they do better near a garage. Is that so? Yeah. Maybe that's what's wrong with our roses. We have them out in front. Uh, well, I wish you'd come in first and see Mary. She hasn't seen you nor the missus in quite a while. Oh, yes, Mary. My wife often speaks of her. And, oh, that wonderful meal we had here. Braised ribs, I believe. Uh, no, it was braised sirloin. Uh, bro? Well, come on in. Uh, say, where's the little fellow? Uh, junior, I believe? Oh, he's around somewhere. Here, I'll close. Oh, thank you. <sighs> right, just sit down right there, Mr. Thompson. <sighs> Have a cigar. Oh, uh, no, thanks, Anderson. I'll just smoke my pipe, I guess. Uh, not uh, the same pipe you smoke at the office. Wouldn't uh, smoke any other. Mm. <laughs> Nearly lost it one time when I was fishing for swordfish. Oh. Did you uh, catch one that day? No, no luck, Dreddit. I did, however, catch a large tuna. Great shining denizen of the deep. That's swell. You probably love tuna, then, as a food, I mean. Tuna! Don't mention the name to me. Huh? I never ate so much of one fish and got so thoroughly disgusted with tuna in my life. Oh. <laughs> I can't stand to stomach it. Why, uh, what's wrong, Edison? Uh, you look faint. Uh, do I? Well, uh, maybe that's because I am. <laughs> Now, back to the Andersons. Well, Oliver invited his boss to dinner and to view some rose bushes, which Oliver almost didn't get set out in time. Mary and Oliver have just cleaned up the cream tuna, and the boss has been eating peanut butter sandwiches to fill out his meal. Uh, well, Mrs. Anderson, I feel as though I'd partaken of a seven-course dinner at the Ritz. Well, it's nice of you to say that, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> However, the uh, next time you come, I hope Oliver has enough foresight to let me know in oh, time. Oh, tut, tut, think nothing of it. <laughs> I'm crazy about peanut butter. That is, I, I get it so seldom at home. Diet and all that rot, you know. Well, <sighs> what do you say we go out and see the rose bushes while it's still light? Oh, I'll bet they're pretty. I, uh, yeah, hope so. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go. I, uh, <clears throat> that is, I'll just stay in, if you don't mind, Oliver, and clean off the table. I wish I could help you. Oh, come now, Anderson. Don't tell me you're domestic, too. <laughs> well, uh... Well, shall we go? Huh? Yes, 
Oh, this corner. I still don't see the roses, Anderson. Well, uh, uh, no, you see, they're, uh, they're out back of the garage. Back of the garage? Surely you're joking, Anderson. Oh, no, no. I find if you keep them in the shade these three months and transplant them after that in a sunny place, they do much better. They do? Yeah. My, I'll have to tell that to my wife. She's been doing it all wrong. Mm. She has them in, in the sun and uh, sprinkles them with some foul-smelling stuff to make them grow. Oh, oh you mean plant food. Uh, well, that could be it. I don't uh, know. Now, there, uh, uh, there, there they are. Just a few of them. Hmm. Peculiar, I must say. Uh, <coughs> why do they lean in different directions? Different directions. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, look. A great raiser of roses once told me that roses were individuals. Oh. If placed in straight rows in upright positions, they lose their individuality and don't do so well. Aha. Uh -huh. I think you have it, Anderson. Yeah. My wife has her roses planted in a direct row. Well, now, uh, you take the uh, pizzicata crimson. Now, yeah. They're sort of a nonchalant type. They'll thrive in just any company. Is that so? Yeah. Hmm. I wonder how my wife has had such good luck in recent years. <laughs> Look, straight row, uh, in the sun, and no individuality. Oh, I suppose she's had unusual luck. Well, well now, now, over there is a... Uh, uh, let me see that tag. Uh, huh? It's a... Uh, Petaluma pink. A petaluma oh, pink. yes, a Petaluma pink. Yeah. I've heard my wife mention that one. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they have a tendency to drop the petals before maturity, I believe. Sort uh, of uh, temperamental, huh? Yes, you <laughs> must. Well, I guess you've seen most of them now. Shall we go in the house? Why, uh, I'm a little disappointed, Anderson, in your assortment. Hmm? I don't know why, but I had presumed from our conversation at the office that you had a large collection. Oh, oh no, I'm sort of a beginner in this. Well, shall we go in? Hmm, I believe I've seen everything. Uh, yeah. By the way, huh? those two bushes by the clothes prop over there. Oh, those. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's that's just an experiment. We're trying to cross a rambler with a petunia, I believe it is. Uh, shall we oh, go in? Oh, come now, come now. That's huh? impossible. Crossing a rose with a petunia. Anderson, you scoundrel, I believe you're hiding something from me. Me? Why, why I, I, I wouldn't hide anything from you, Mr. Thompson. There are just a couple of throwaways, uh, shall we? But that, uh, that, that yellow rose. Oh, that one. Well, that's just a hangover from better days is all. Let shall we? Let uh, me look closer at that. Uh, uh, a little wooden tag on it there. Uh, so I see. Can't see very well without my glasses. Oh, Let's good. see. Uh, uh, yellow bus dawn. Uh, yellow bus dawn? Anderson, is this some sort of a trick? Huh? Are you trying to conceal the fact that you have a dawn of yellow bus? On a yellow bus? It, it, you it, know it is. it is! Of all the deceitful, underhanded tricks, Anderson, this is it. Well, now, I... I wouldn't have that rose bush if you offered it to me free. Well, I... I, I... I always said... Yes, I've always said... You can find out about a man among his flowers. I shall see you in the morning. In the morning? Uh, you mean... Uh... I think I've made myself clear. Oh... Junior, just a minute. I want to talk to you. Oh, gee, I can't wait now. The kids are waiting for me, Pop. Let them wait. Now, you went to the nursery and bought some rose bushes, right? Mom told me to. I know. But how did you get hold of a dawn of yellow bus? Yellow bus? Yeah. Is that bad? I don't know, Pop. I, I just picked out a dozen bushes and the man wrapped them up. Well, where did you get those little paddles that were on them? Oh, the paddles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got them on the window ledge in the garage. I just put them on as I came to them. That's all I wanted to know. That little gesture on your part is apt to cut off our feed. Uh-oh. You mean you're fired again, Pop? I am not fired again. But there's no excuse for your interfering with those paddles. Yeah, I'm wrong. But the kids are waiting for me. I know that. Oh. I get it. This is pretty serious, huh, Pop? It certainly is. Now, why did you put that dawn of yellow bus paddle on the bush by the clothes post? Oh, gee, I don't know. Well, hey, maybe it came on it. Some of them did have paddles on them. I see. Well, now, look. You tell those kids you're not coming out tonight. And you're going to cut the grass tomorrow and clean the yard. Tomorrow? Yes, oh, tomorrow. Oh, gee. We were going to a show tomorrow, Pop. Well, it's off. Might as well learn now. Life isn't just a long string of pleasantries. What you've just done is serious. It may change our whole pattern of life. Well, looks like you got an airtight case there, so... Okay, I'll accept your verdict, Pop. But I'd like to appeal it. No appeal this time, son. You overdid it. Admirably done, Oliver. It was? Hmm. Well, why don't you try to help me? 
Instead of just sitting and saying nothing. There was nothing to say. It would just confuse the issue. You let me do all the punishing. That was your idea, not mine. Well... I knew he was only trying to help. Oh, you feel that I've been unjust, I Let's suppose. say a bit hasty. Well... He planned all week on that serial picture tomorrow. Well, what could I do? He's too big to argue with. But the punishment was too great for the deed, Oliver. What shall I do now? Go to his room and apologize? Well, no. Let's make just one thing stake, shall we? Maybe this is one of Junior's friends. Oh, tell him he's tired. Or something. Good evening. Uh, Mrs. Anderson? That's right. Uh, I sold your boy some rose bushes this afternoon. Oh, yes. Come uh, in. Among those rose bushes was one outstanding plant. And in fact, a lady had called and offered me a lot of money for it. Oh, yeah. Was it uh, Mrs. Thompson? Oh, yes. I believe it was. <laughs> and uh, I gave it to your boy by mistake. Well, now, sit down, brother. Here. Have a cigar. I, I don't smoke. Well, then have a cup of coffee. I'm glad to see you. Goodness, is something wrong? Now, look, mister. I'm going to give you that bush back for nothing on one condition. Well, what's the condition? That you tell Mrs. Thompson that the only dawn of yellow bus in town is owned by me. I bought it. She'll have to deal with me. Well, would that be honorable? Now, look, don't be naive. Well, I'd do anything to straighten this out. Fine. Just call Mrs. Thompson, tell her I bought it, and that's all you have to do. I'll collect the money for you. Now, go ahead. Get busy. <laughs> There, you see, Mary? I'm getting action right away. Mm -hmm. Yes? Hello, Anderson. I want to apologize for my nasty temper this afternoon. Oh, it's all right. I don't know what got into me. Oh, skip it. I'll drop by your office one of these days and talk it over with you. Oh, what are you saying? <laughs> Look, Anderson, I... I was upset about the dawn of Yellow Bus, my wife, and just everything. Yeah, I know. But your actions were nauseous. No, wait, Anderson. You can't talk to me that way. I don't even think I want to talk to you. Goodbye. Well, you <laughs> certainly burned the bridge that time. Not me. I know just what he'll do. So do I. He'll talk to his wife about it, and when he doesn't come up with a rose bush... He... Wait, Oliver. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, Mary Anderson speaking. Now, look here. Oh, 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 oh it's Mary. My, my, I'm sorry. I know. Uh, look, Mary... If you can talk to that stubborn lord of the manor out there and don't let him know I'm phoning on my knees. I know just what you mean. Hang it up, Mary. Luella, bless her heart, is sitting here beside me as I phone. Someone called her and said you own the only dawn of yellow bus in town. Please, Mary. Well, Oliver and I talked it over and you've done so much for him. Mary, how that can we... you lie like that? Oh, I knew you'd come through, Mary. And, oh, yes, uh, if I can get that bush tonight... I'll add another gold stripe on Oliver's time card. I know that'd thrill him to death. Mm -hmm. So just come on out and get the bush. Goodbye. You've no idea what you've averted, Mary. I think I do. Good night. What happened? It was as you said, darling. Just think. He's going to add another gold stripe on your time card. He is? <laughs> Great. Oh, I'll have three then. Top man at the clock. But let's not forget Junior had a lot to do with this. Junior? Oh, yeah. I'll go and have a little talk with him. You know what to say. Oh, hi, Pop. Hmm, kind of stuffy in here. You better open the window. No. When a guy's getting punished, he should go all the way. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh, don't sit there, Pop. Hmm? I've just glued those parts of the plane. Oh, oh, excuse me. You know, Junior... One of the greatest traits in life is knowing when you're wrong and admitting it. I don't think you fluffed it, Pop. After all, I did botch up the whole deal. I didn't mean that. The whole thing worked out all right. Uh, don't lean on the box, Pop. Huh? The glue. The glue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, listen. I'm going to tell you this if it takes all night. Well, I'm sorry. Well, okay. Now, I've decided that the grass isn't long enough to cut tomorrow. Pretty ragged, Pop. I hadn't noticed it. And anyhow, I said I would, so... I don't care what you said. You know, you're going to fool around until you do cut that grass now. Ah, oh, gee, you get so upset over little things. Well, Pop. these are not little things. Yeah, I know, but... So tomorrow, you go to the show with the kids. If you want to go over to Butch Chapman's tonight, go ahead. Nah, it's pretty late now. Well... I didn't want to go out very much anyhow. I'd rather glue my plane model. Oh, you would? Yeah. And it'll probably be a corny picture tomorrow. And if I'm going out for football, I better mow the grass to build me up. Oh. 
pal. I just thought I'd mention it all. Good night, Pop. Yeah, good night. <laughs> What's fun? <laughs> you. Yeah, yes, I am. I just missed another chance to be a good guy in there. <laughs> no, you didn't, darling. It's those foolish little episodes which kids carry all through their lives. Their memories of their pop. <laughs> they do? Why, of course. <laughs> Why, Mary, you're just plain sentimental. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, by the way, darling, hmm? the moon is out. I'd like to walk through our lovely rose garden with you in the moonlight. <laughs> rose garden? Oh, yeah. Out back of the garage. <laughs> what a laugh. <laughs> Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, Walter Tetley as Junior, Herbert Rollinson as Homer, and Paul Theodore as the boss. Others in the cast were Doug Young and Jenny Johnson. Music by Gordon Kibbe, sound effects by Ray Erlenborn, and your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood Broadcasters production, transcribed from Hollywood. <laughs>